you would open your Bibles to Acts chapter 17. It's good to see each one here, and especially we are thankful for our visitors. If somebody came up to you and uh, said, I don't really believe in gravity, what would you say to that? If they said something like, you know, I mean, it's fine with me if you believe in gravity. And it's fine if you want to, you know, order your life around that and, and behave in accordance with your notions of gravity. But what I just can't stand is when people try to impose gravity on me. I think we just, well, first of all, we'd look at them like they're crazy. But, you know, our minds would start thinking, what do you, what do you mean imposing no, no one's imposing gravity. It just is. And, and you, wouldn't, you wouldn't argue in terms of, um, you know, a personal belief that I hold and maybe you don't hold it. And I'm going to try to convince you um, in, in particularly in an emotional way. Uh, you would really focus on, you know, just you, what do you think has got you attached to the ground right now? You know, I mean, some real basic elementary, I mean, you wouldn't even go to Newton, probably. I mean, you, you're, you're, not, you're not talking about grand theories even. It's just like, what keeps you from floating off into space then? In Acts chapter 17, when Paul comes up to the idolaters who are worshiping so many gods, and they do have an inscription to an unknown god, but they, but they do not know him. He uses that, but of course, they, they don't have that statue there, meaning that's for Yahweh. That it, it just is a display of ignorance. They don't believe in that. And I'll tell you what they certainly don't believe in is that there is one God. Um, I, I just, I don't believe in that. And I want to suggest to you that what Paul does is he goes through and preaches in such a way that not... A, He's not preaching in the sort of way that was popular then, and it's not popular now, and that he doesn't go through and say, well, here, here's another way to think about this philosophical subject. He says, no, 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 I want to tell you about this God that you don't know about. He is the one that made every one of us. How do you think you're breathing right now? How do you think you're moving right now? You don't move and you don't breathe without him. And then he goes on to show the intellectual bankruptcy of believing in gods made with hands. It doesn't even make sense that gods who made us then somehow need our service in order to exist and thrive. We have to bring them food. I want to tell you about a God who is all-powerful and who logically meets the requirements of a God who could create the whole world. He says, We ought not to suppose that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the craft and thought of men. It can't work from us to him. It, it must work from him to us if he is the God who has created. And then he brings it to its culmination. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance... God is now commanding men that everyone everywhere should repent. And because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he determined, having furnished proof to all by raising him from the dead. I'll tell you another element of somebody coming and saying they don't believe in gravity. It wouldn't just be a frustrating thing. It'd be a worrisome thing. Like, pretty soon, that's going to get them in trouble. Little, little boys sometimes don't believe in gravity. They don't not believe in gravity for long, and hopefully it's not too damaging. But you could imagine the scenarios where it would be. And so you wouldn't want that disbelief to go on very long. You would say, one day you will come face to face with gravity, and I hope that you can recognize its reality before it is a very painful lesson that maybe you don't recover from. 
I think that's the way we need to think about God. It is not some personal belief I'm imposing. It's what is. I'm not imposing morality. I'm talking to you about the God who created everything and including the moral rules that rule his creation. And it is one thing to say God has not always strictly enforced the consequences of those moral rules. Yes, but that's one of the points Paul makes. Now that his son has come, all of that's done with. And he wants clarity. And he says it all comes to clarity in his son and you will come face to face with the reality. And it won't be imposing and it won't be a personal belief. It'll just be as certain and even more certain than gravity. Don't wait until then to start to believe. Recognize it. Every time you take a breath, every time you move your body, you are operating in the reality of the one who created it all. And if you have not <clears throat> yielded to him, recognize the reality that all men will come face to face with him. If there's anyone here this evening who needs to make recognition of that in their lives by way of coming to terms, coming into harmony with that reality and proclaiming it through obedience, if there's any way we can help you to reconcile that this evening, why don't you come forward and let us know while we stand and while we sing.